Good morning, I'm Maddie Jansen, and this is the podcast of 17 News at Sunrise. It's everything you need to know to start your day in about 15 minutes. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Right now at 5, the city of Taft votes to reopen business is that it dreams critical to society. But the county says not so fast. We look into who gets to decide and the mayor of Taft will join us live this morning to talk about their decision. As two local doctors take their message to reopen the economy to a national stage, we fact check the doctors claims that have now gone viral and hear what they have to say in response to the criticism. Plus, a group of local attorneys and business owners call the stay-at-home orders unconstitutional. They're sending a message to county supervisors, your chance to weigh in. This is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. Good morning. It is 5 a.m. on this Wednesday, and it has just been a, uh, a taste of summer, I have to say, Maddie and Kevin, because yesterday I decided to uh, take a walk around the neighborhood and uh, ended up turning into a pretty pretty decent walk, I would have to say, because I felt like I was just sweating so much. It was very, very hot. Yeah, it's getting to that point, even up in the mountains, where I'm going to start considering the air conditioning. I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm sure many people <laughs> down in the valley have had I turned mine on plunge. yesterday. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's getting warm. I thought you were going to say you jumped in the pool, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> He's not quite there yet. Not quite there. I don't think a lot of people are. I put my foot in yesterday. It was lukewarm. So we're getting there, but just not yet. We need a few for 90s and maybe even some triple digits before we really start to warm those pools up. But it was definitely warm yesterday. Uh, we were in the upper 80s. We didn't hit that 90 degree mark, but it was still warm uh, all around with that 88 and it's still above our normal of 79 for this time of year. Our record yesterday was actually 97 and that was set back in 2007. Now today it is going to be a little bit warmer than yesterday and then we'll start to see a cool down. We also have some other things that are going to be happening in our forecast for today as well. But again, Again, yesterday's high was 88 degrees. Let's take a look right now at current conditions, and you can see we've got clear skies, but look off to the north and to the west, and we are expecting to see some clouds increase as we go throughout today. So I think we'll start out mostly sunny and end out the day mostly cloudy, but that's not going to uh, really affect our temperatures much. We're still expecting 90, 67 out there right now under a calm wind. As we take a look at today, we'll look for mostly sunny skies to start. By noon, 87 with increasing clouds. And by 3 o'clock, mostly cloudy, but we'll be right near 93. And I think we might peak today at 95. For Tehachapi, 48 degrees right now under a calm wind. And as we take a look at our current winds, not a problem whatsoever. And uh, here's a look at the hour by hour. We're going to start out in the upper 40s. By noon, partly cloudy and 80. By 3, mostly cloudy. And we'll be looking at 82. I'll have much more in your forecast that's coming up in a little bit. For now, we'll send it back over to you. All right, thanks so much, Kevin. The time now is 5.03 and you here at Sunrise. We're working to figure out what incident brought out a large police presence to Shafter last night. According to a Pulse Point, officers were called to the area of Woodbrook Drive, just north of 7th Standard Road, around 11 p.m. You can see in this new video at least one hazmat truck was called out to the area. We have calls into Shafter Police and we're waiting to hear back. We'll bring you new information as soon as we get it. In just a few hours, we're expecting another update on the coronavirus here in Kern County. We want to show you how the numbers stand right now. There are 856 positive cases of coronavirus in Kern. Five people have died. And 449 people have made full recoveries. That's more than half of the total cases. All right, we want to show you a look at the curve. And our current peak was 20 days ago with 63 cases. But we're still seeing days with dozens of new cases. Here's how testing breaks down across Kern County. More than 10,600 tests have been conducted. More than 6,200 of those tests have come back with negative results. But more than 3,600 people are more, more than 3,600 tests, I should say, are still waiting for their results. And finally, here's a look at where these cases across Kern, are across Kern County. 102 in the region known as the Valley. 250 in the region known as Bakersfield West, 456 in the area known as Bakersfield East, 21 in the Mountain, 
community and 18 in the desert region. Now, it's important to note that while the region Bakersfield East has a lot more cases than the other areas, it's also uh, more dense with a population of more than 100,000 compared to the other regions. And current public health officials say sometime this week they may release more demographic information about these cases, such as race, gender, and city. And as we've reported before, other counties in the state are reporting that information. And now is 505. A group of local attorneys and business owners say that their constitutional rights are being violated by the stay-at-home mandate meant to stop the spread of COVID-19. The group sent a letter to the County Board of Supervisors. In it, the group cites an order by Kern Public Health, which called for the closing of all bars, wineries, and other businesses that serve alcohol, but not food, as well as the closings of gyms and fitness centers and the ban on all public or private gatherings. The group says the order violates the First and Fifth Amendments because it deprives property owners of the right to earn a living and people of the right to gather. And that's the subject of today's 17 Interactive Feedback Poll. We're asking, do you agree with the claim made by local attorneys and business owners that the stay-at-home order is unconstitutional? We want to hear what you think. Call 888-4617. Press 1 if, yes, you think it is unconstitutional. 2 if not. You can also text, tweet, email, or Facebook us your comments. We'll start looking at those votes and what you have to say coming up this morning at 530. Meantime, Taft City Council has unanimously approved a plan allowing some businesses to reopen next Monday, May 4th. We're very pleased with the council decision. It was great for business and great for Taft. The plan calls for a recognition that some businesses listed as non-essential are indeed critical to society. Businesses like gyms, barbershops, hair salons, and flower shops. Taft Mayor Dave Knorr says while this plan will help the city hurting from the closure of Taft of the Taft Correctional Institution and the collapse of oil, he wants to make clear in no way is this a complete reopening of Taft. We are not taking a wholesale, it's all over approach by any means. In point of fact, if you think about it, if this is going to be the new normal and we're going to have to use these lessons of social distancing and PPE and, and hygiene, as we move forward, whether it's weeks or months or even more, there's no time like the present to take a hard look at that and actually integrate those processes. That means businesses reopening would still need to adhere to social distancing guidelines. So does Taft actually have the authority to reopen? Almost everyone from business owners to government officials are ready and eager to get back to real life. But whose call is it? Who gets to decide? 17's Robert Price looks for an answer. Federal, state, county, municipal. Four levels of authority, all trying to manage the delicate problem posed by the COVID-19 virus how to bring back the economy without bringing back the virus. It's a dance very much on the minds of those on the Taft City Council, which this week voted to develop a plan to bring back local business. But as Taft Mayor Dave Norse says, city leaders weren't sure who to ask. We are not ignoring anybody's authority, which you are right. At this point in time, it's, it's really hard to see on any given day who actually has that. Well, Taft has its answer. Late Tuesday, Kern County Public Health notified the city that it would not be permitted to flip open closed signs to open. The lockdown remains in effect there and throughout the county. But when the time comes, does county public health have the authority to say yes? At his COVID-19 briefing Tuesday, Newsom seemed to say yes presumably with the state's endorsement, but different sections of the state might be permitted to roll out their own timetables. Localism is determinative in this respect. I recognize the regionality in this state, the variance uh, in different parts of the state, but I also recognize in that respect, local health departments uh, have points of view that must be considered as well. Accordingly, we have a regional variance that we also want to recognize for people that want to go even sooner based upon regional conditions. Reopening is also very much on the mind of Bakersfield Mayor Karen Go. She said she and the local business community have maintained an ongoing virtual dialogue as she guides the city cautiously toward the next phase. The chamber and I have been working to have these virtual roundtables with businesses to get their comments so that we can share them with our governor and with the, the federal people also. Wow. So I found our 
business owners to be so practical and thoughtful in opening up safely. But as of now, the governor's word is still our accepted marching orders, despite Newsom's hints about new local control. And Congressman T.J. Cox says Newsom's leadership has been spot on. Physical wellness comes first. We don't want to recreate the, the conditions that led to this, uh, you know, this crisis in the first place. And everybody, I mean, everybody uh, knows that we have to, at some point, reopen the economy. So who is in charge? Who makes the call? In his address, Governor Newsom said local jurisdictions have more say-so than maybe they thought they did. But do those local jurisdictions want that say-so, or do they just want to follow the governor's guidelines? That remains to be seen. For 17 News, Robert Price. And coming up in a little over an hour, Taft Mayor Dave Knorr will join us via Zoom to talk about Taft's plans to reopen and where they go next. Meantime, the Arvin City Council met last night to talk about coronavirus measures. The council voted to update its administrative citation ordinance, ordinance to give staff the ability to cite people for not following public health orders. The council also voted to consult with public health to see if there's a basis to support a mandate requiring essential businesses to have their employees wear face coverings. There was no action taken, though, on whether to reopen businesses. And happening today, the city of Ridgecrest will hold a virtual town hall. City leaders are asking residents for opinions on how to reopen the city safely. In the flyer, the city says all input will be shared with the COVID-19 Reopening County Committee and the Board of Supervisors. It starts at 5 p.m. They're saying you should email your comments ahead of time to COVID-19 at RidgecrestCA.gov. The time now is 5:11. A local doctor is worried a dangerous trend is emerging because of the pandemic. Heart attack and stroke patients deciding not to go to the hospital for fear of catching the coronavirus. And in general, we have seen a 50, maybe even 60 percent volume decrease on what we used to see on the ER. There's no way that the strokes and heart attacks are disappearing. You know, people are just uh, delaying the care. Nationally, emergency room visits have dropped dramatically, and the same is true for local hospitals. Both Dignity Health and Adventist Health Bakersfield and Hatchapi say they're seeing drops. Adventist Health Chief Medical Officer Dr. Ronald Reynoso says time is crucial when it comes to heart attacks and strokes. Delaying treatment could mean the difference between life or death. He says patients who come into the ER will be protected. They've implemented universal masking and have a separate ER for those suffering COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, get people protected because it, we also, also try to protect ourselves as clinicians, you know, and physicians and nurses and all the staff. So the same precautions we take for us, you know, we take for patients. So we're securing that piece. But when you delay the care, you know, you are against the odds. Heart attack symptoms include chest discomfort or pain in other areas of the upper body, shortness of breath, cold sweat, nausea, and dizziness. Symptoms of a stroke are facial drooping, arm weakness, and speech difficulty. Happening today, the Wonderful Company says it's handing out 1.6 million of its wonderful Halos mandarins to Central Valley hospitals, schools, and food banks. The company says they want people who are working on the front lines or who are in need to have a fresh, locally grown, healthy snack. They'll give Halos to Bakersfield Memorial Hospital, the Kern County School District, a, the Wasco Elementary School District, Community Action Partnership of Kern, and more. Welcome back. Just uh, 527 now. In just a few minutes, the Commerce Department is set to release the first quarter gross domestic product report. It's expected to show a downturn in the U.S. economy because of the coronavirus pandemic. The American economy has grown for nearly six straight years. Today's report will almost certainly end that streak. Businesses shut down and workers stayed home while mass layoffs led claims for unemployment benefits to spike. Economists predict the U.S. economy contracted at a 4% annualized rate compared to a 2.1% growth rate in the fourth quarter of last year. It's the first drop since 2014 and the worst drop since the first quarter of 2009. The coronavirus is causing havoc for smartphone industries as well. Samsung says COVID-19 is going to affect smartphone sales as well as the introduction of 5G. The South Korean company also adds the pandemic has ignited a major change in lifestyles. Samsung is predicting people will become even more reliant on digital services as working from home becomes more prevalent. 
Although Samsung boasted a $5.3 billion profit for the first three months of 2020, they say COVID-19 is producing uncertainty in the market. A dispute between Universal Pictures and AMC Theaters. The theater chain says it will no longer screen Universal films. This after NBC Universal's CEO told the Wall Street Journal, once theaters reopen, they expect to release movies directly to theaters and on demand at the same time. AMC called that idea categorically unacceptable. Universal successfully released Trolls World Tour on digital platforms only after the pandemic forced movie theaters to close. But AMC called that release an exception to the rule. It says changing the way movies are released represents nothing but a downfall for theaters. All right, we're back with more news after the break.